A Dog Has Died by Pablo Neruda Pablo Neruda was a Chilean poet and politician. His real name was Neftali Ricardo Reyes Basalto. He signed his work named Pablo Neruda, although he did not legally adopt that name until 1946 because his father disapproved of his son's poetic interest. Tundi Love Poems and A Song of Despair is Pablo Neruda's most famous collection of poetry. He gained a lot of fame due to his love poems and also his political writing. He was a communist and was forced to leave Chile temporarily due to his political ideology. After the death of the Chiguere in 1967, Neruda wrote several articles regretting the loss of the great hero. In 1971, Pablo Neruda won Nobel Prize for Literature. A Dog Has Died is about a man speaking about his past away dog and what he did after the dog died. When we look at the title, the poem looks pretty ordinary and possibly boring. But I believe in the fact that poet's style is what makes the poem special rather than the topic. That's why Pablo Neruda is still considered the most widely read Latin American poet, even after his 47 years of death. Now we can go through the poem. My dog has died. I buried him in the garden next to a rested old machine. In the first stanza, the speaker begins with a simple statement about his dog. He has died. Yes, my dog has died. Neruda addresses this loss in simple and direct language. There is nothing sentimental or emotional about these first lines. It seems as though the speaker is mourning the loss of his dog. However, at the same time, he is also behaving as if it is something of not much importance. It is evident from the first stanza onwards. The fact that the dog is buried next to a rusted old machine suggests that there was not much importance placed upon the dog's death. There is no mention of a particular act of kindness such as uh, too much love, care took place in the burial of the dog and therefore the dog's death was of no real significance to the speaker. Yet he mourns the loss of his dog. Now coming to the second stanza. Someday I will join him right there. But now he's gone with his shaggy coat, his bad manners and his cold nose. And I, the materialist who never believed in any promised heaven in the sky for any human being, I believe in a heaven I will never enter. Yes, I believe in a heaven for all dogdom where my dog waits for my arrival waving his fan-like tail in friendship here the speaker says that someday i will join him right there at the heaven for dogs but now the reality is that he has left he has gone forever but i the materialist so material who is a materialist a person who believes in things which are visible. Go through the fourth line of this stanza, second stanza. I, the materialist, who never believed in any promised heaven in the sky for any human being. The writer does not expect any heaven for human beings because he realizes that materialistic people commit a lot of sin and so they are not eligible for salvation. So he doesn't believe a heaven for human being. But he believes that there is a heaven for dogs, that is dogdom. Here he says that his dog will be waiting for him in the dogdom, heaven, which may be a reference to himself as men are often referred to as dogs. The line also reveals that the poet believes in life after death. Now we can go to the third stanza. A. 
I will not speak of sadness here on earth, of having lost a companion who is never servile. His friendship for me, like that of a procopine, withholding its authority, was the friendship of a star aloof, with no more intimacy than was called for, with no exaggerations. He never climbed all over my clothes, filling me full of his hair or his mage. He never rubbed up against my knee like other dogs obsessed with sex. The speaker says that he will not speak of sadness here on earth. Instead of that, he would like to choose the happy moments that he has shared with his dog. His dog was a companion who was never servile. Servile means the dog never shown any excessive willingness to serve his master. So, he was more like a friend than a servant to Neruda. But even then, the friendship was difficult. The dog was aloof like a porcupine or a star. Here the behavior of the dog towards its master is compared to that of a porcupine. Porcupine is an animal with defensive spines. Suppose if any enemy approach towards it, it will use its spines to defend its enemy. Here, the dog was not overly affectionate towards Neruda. Suppose if you have a dog as your pet and it will show its affection towards you by certain gestures, maybe rubbing his nose against your knee or by climbing all over your clothes and filling your clothes with his hair. But here, Neruda's dog never shone such an intimacy towards him. Neruda appreciated the manners of his dog and he believes that his dog was superior to others in most respects. Stanza 4 No, my dog used to gaze at me, paying me the attention I need, the attention required to make a vain person like me understand that, being a dog, he was wasting time, but... With those eyes so much purer than mine, he'd keep on gazing at me with a look that preserved for me alone. All his sweet and shaggy life, always near me, never troubling me and asking nothing. The previous stanza stated that the dog was not overly affectionate towards the poet. Here in this fourth stanza, the poet fully fleshed out the personality of the dog. He did not demand too much attention nor did he give the poet more than he needed. The dog paid him just enough attention for them to understand one another. Neruda could see a lot of things in the eyes of his dog including the special nature of their relationship. Those eyes are purer than that of the poet. The dog keep on gazing at his master in which the look was only reserved for him. The dog spent his sweet and shaggy life with Neruda. He never asked for anything or troubled the poet with his presence. He was the perfect companion for the poet. Stanza 5 A. How many times have I envied his tail as we walked together on the shores of the sea in the lonely winter of Isla Negra where the wintering birds filled the sky and my hairy dog was jumping about full of the voltage of the sea's movement. My wandering dog sniffing away with his golden tail held high face to face with the ocean's Spray. Here, the poem signifies the poet's jealous upon the dog's simplicity of life and happiness. As they walked together on the shores of the sea at Isla Negra. Here, Isla Negra is a coastal area in Latin America. That is Neruda's native place, Chile. So, as they walked together on the shores of the sea at Isla Negra, he finds winter lonely while his dog is there to fulfill his solitude. 
His dog is jumping about, full of the voltage of the sea's movement. It is a sign of playfulness and intense joy of the dog. The poet paid attention towards his dog's intense joy, but cannot raise himself to that height of ecstasy because he couldn't enjoy the worldly affairs. The dog symbolizes optimism, while the poet symbolizes pessimism. According to the poet, only the dogs can feel this joy and not the human beings. The mood in these lines is peaceful. The speaker is looking back on a time in which everything seemed in order. They were together in a beautiful setting and his dog was as happy as it is possible to be. Stanza 6 Joyful, 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 as only dogs know how to be happy with only the autonomy of their shameless spirit. In this line, the poet uses the word joyful three times. This is done in order to emphasize the limitless joy that his dog was capable of feeling. This was something that only dogs know. Humans do not have the same capacity Although he does not state it directly, it seems as though Neruda is jealous of this fact of life. They have a shameless spirit that humans can only envy. Final stanzas There are no goodbyes for my dog who has died, and we don't know and never did lie to each other. So now he's gone and I buried him. And that's all. There is to it. The final two stanzas of this poem are the shortest of it, with two lines each. The first of these couplets addresses the fact that there are now no goodbyes for his dog. They always had an honest relationship and nothing has changed now that he has gone. The simplest of the first lines of the poem written in the final couplet. He speaks directly about the death of his dog and how that is all there is to it. He finally admits that his dog has died. Today we studied a beautiful poem written by Pablo Neruda. It is a moving elegy written after the death of the poet's reserved and a joyful dog. In this poem, Neruda explores themes of animal-human relationship, companionship and the afterlife. Throughout the poem, the poet takes the reader through the different aspects of his dog's personality. He was not over-affectionate or overbearing. The dog did as he liked when he wanted to. He gave Neruda just enough attention for them to understand one another. Neruda spends the last stanza of the poem discussing the joy his dog took in everything. He had the capacity to celebrate his life that humans don't have.